Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Dragnet is brought to you by Chesterfield, made by Liggett and Myers, first major tobacco company to bring you a complete line of quality cigarettes. <laughs> You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned to robbery detail. Fourteen women in your city have been robbed and beaten. You've got a half dozen descriptions of their attacker. None of them match. The man's still free. Your job, get him. Chesterfield's for me. You hear it everywhere. Tonight, we hear from America's number one band leader, Ray Anthony, who, with his attractive wife, Dee, plays college dates from coast to coast. In cigarettes, the young crowd really goes for Chesterfields. I've noticed that wherever we've played. And I guess it's one of the reasons Chesterfield is America's most popular two-way cigarette. Of course, Dee and I are Chesterfield smokers, too. We know they're best for us. Chesterfields for me. You hear it everywhere. For the taste you want, the mildness you want, change to Chesterfield. They satisfy millions. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Wednesday, November 26th. It was cold in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out a robbery detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss's chief of detectives, Thad Brown. My name's Friday. I was on my way back to the office, and it was 2.34 p.m. when I got to room 27A. Robbery. Come on, Joe. Everybody's in the skipper's office. All right. I tagged by R and I to pick up these packages. Anything on them? No, not much. We'll check them out, but they don't look like they're going anyplace. Yeah, go ahead. Joe, Frank, you want to come over here? Yes, sir. <coughs> Sorry we're late. Don't worry about it. Let's get this thing on the road. All right. You want to settle down? Let's get started. <clears throat> the word's probably gotten to you about why we're here. It's on this purse snatching thing Friday and Smith have got. Things gotten way out of hand. Thief hit again the night before last. Victim's at the county hospital in a critical condition. She was pistol whipped, and it looks like she's got a fractured skull. It's only a matter of time before somebody's killed. That's the reason we're here, to see that it doesn't happen. Now, you all got mimeographed MO sheets. On it, you'll find what information we've got. Some of it's pretty broad, but it's the best we've been able to come up with. Friday and Smith have handled the thing to here, so I'll let them give you the details. You want to tell them? Yeah, right, Skipper. Well, first off, you'll notice on those MO sheets, all of the crimes have been listed in the order that they happened. Also, the place and the time. There's also a description of the clothing the suspect wore, and when we could get it, a description of the suspect. <coughs> now, you'll notice that in most cases, there's quite a difference there on the physical description of the suspect. However, we've been able to put them all together, and we've come up with a composite drawing that should look something like the suspect. The one thing that's fairly constant is the description of the clothing worn by the suspect. It's almost always dark. Wears a hat, and he's been known to wear a top coat. Uh, the hat and the coat are also dark material. Mm -hmm. Clear? There yeah, it is. Honey. Yeah. All right, now take a look over here at the wall map. Now, we've pinpointed all the jobs so you can get a little better picture of the operation. Can you all see there? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Now, the first one took place at 73rd Street, just off Broadway, right here. The rest of the pins along here show the jobs that he made from there, all the way up to Jefferson. He's also worked Avalon Boulevard, Central Avenue, any street where there's a streetcar or a bus line, he's hit. He works between the hours of 5.30 and 11.30 p.m. The approach is almost always the same. Frank, you want to tell him about the victim? Yeah. Him? The victim will get off the streetcar usually, or the bus, whatever it is, and starts to walk home. As soon as the woman gets in the area that's not lighted well or that hasn't got much traffic, the guy walks up behind her and grabs him. After that, he tries to take her purse. If the victim offers any resistance, well, he usually slugs him. Because of the fact that two of the victims have seen a gun in his hand, we know he's armed. So 
The gun's been described as revolver to me. Mm -hmm. How about a car, Joe? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. A uh, suspect drive one? Car? Yeah. Well, we've got to assume that, yeah. He's been seen a couple of times by people in the neighborhoods as he ran through their yards. It's pretty safe to figure that he's got a car parked on a side street somewhere. <coughs> None of the victims have seen a car, however, but we know he leaves the area immediately. Mm -hmm. No description of the vehicle, huh? No. No, we've had a couple of calls, but they didn't check out. Now, the plan here is to use police women as decoys and try to bait him out into the open. That's the reason the women officers are here. You figure to work the main arterials? What was that? You figure to work the main arterials? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there'll be two officers assigned to follow each policewoman. Now, we've been able to obtain 10 in all. That'll mean that uh, 20 officers will be assigned to them. Uh, the rest of you will be in the area somewhere. Now, one of the things to look for is any vehicle which closely follows a streetcar or a bus. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> what happened? How about it? Any questions? Yes. Uh, how are we going to get our assignments? Well, the skipper here has a list, Lomi. All of the officers who are to work with a policewoman are noted. Now, the others are given the areas that they're supposed to patrol. Well, what about other calls yeah, coming in? Yeah. Who's what? going to handle that? I didn't hear you. The other calls coming in, who's going to handle them? Well, those officers are not assigned to a policewoman. See, there'll be other units from the outlying areas on the operation, too. They'll lend us a hand. But remember this. Under no circumstances are those officers working with the decoy to leave her. Is mm -hmm. that clear? Yeah. Don't leave the policewoman. Right. Well, then we stick with the detail, unless there's an emergency call. Yeah, that's right. Well, if we run into any problems, who do we call, Joe? Well, we'll be in the area in 1K80. You can get in touch with us, Harry. Mm -hmm. How about it? Well, if we uh, pick up a suspect, should we get in touch with you? Well, you can use your own judgment on that, George. If you think it's a routine pickup, take him to robbery, and he'll be processed there. All right. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. I don't Skipper, anything else? We all know about the day's off cancellation. Sorry it has to hit now, but that's the way it's got to be. Mm -hmm. No one will draw any time until this thing is cleaned up. Right. When well, Murphy, won't do any good to have your wife call me. You're still going to have to work. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Operation will start tonight and go until the suspect's in custody. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay. So, say, wait a minute. Before you go, the worksheet's on the board outside. You can check it on the way out. You better do that. Right. Is there anything else you need to carry it off? No, it's all there, Skipper. The only thing we can use now is luck. No reason for you to be different. Hmm? The suspect's had his share. Frank and I left the office and drove out to the area of the operation. The plan was that the police women would board the cars and buses and get off at the points where previous sluggings had not taken place. In the established MO of the suspect, it was noted that he never hit on any street more than once. 4 p.m. that afternoon, all of the units were in place and the plan was started. During the night, several pickups were made, but no one was apprehended who resembled the suspect. Those people who were detained were processed and they were either booked or released. The following day, Thursday, November 27, Frank and I checked the reports filed by officers in the field. At 3 p.m., we stopped at a small restaurant and we had a plate of sliced turkey, cold gravy, and some lumpy mashed potatoes. We wished each other a happy Thanksgiving. We went back to Unit 1K80 and cruised the streets marked for surveillance. Another night went by without the suspect hitting. Saturday, November 29th, 11.30 p.m. Frank and I were driving down San Pedro Street at Vernon Avenue. Looks like another one shot, huh? Yeah, it's beginning to shape up that way, isn't it? You figure the suspect knows about the operation? I mean, where we're working? Well, you got as much as I have. Doesn't seem likely. You got a cigarette? I'm out. Yeah. There you go. Thanks. Yeah, I'm going to give you a light. 660, Faye was sure hacked about Thanksgiving. Well, that figures. Now, it didn't make me too mad. She had the in-laws over. Yeah. Her brother. Huh. One thing about that guy, he can eat more than any ten people. You know, I've had to sit there and just look at him, and everybody's through, and he's still going strong. Yeah. Nephew was over, too. You know little Sam? You've heard me talk about little Sam. No, I don't think so. Yeah, little Sam. Kid's a monster. Only 10 years old, and he's a real monster. Faye's sister lets the kid do whatever comes into his mind. They say it isn't good to repress him. What? They say it isn't good to repress him. That's what they, you know, repress him. Yeah. I'd like to take him over. I'd repress him. <laughs> yeah, I guess you'd do that real good, wouldn't you? 1K80. Yeah. 1K80. Meet 
One K eight O, Roger. KMA three six seven. Let's go. Yeah, that's one of the units assigned to a decoy. Think it's a good one? Well, there's one way to find out, isn't there? Yeah. Ask him. South Park is located at the corner of San Pedro and 51st Street. One of the police women had gotten off a streetcar at the corner of Main Street and 51st. She'd walked east, and as she passed the park, a man had approached, blocked her progress, and demanded money. The man was pretty drunk, and when the officers following the woman arrived at the scene, he was struggling with a policewoman. He was taken into custody, and we were called. We took the man to room 27A, and from there to the interrogation room. Physically, he matched the description of the suspect as we'd gotten it from the victims. 12.15 a.m. That's the dirtiest thing I ever heard of, pulling me in here like this. All right, what's your name? I don't think I'm going to tell you. Let me see your wallet. There's nothing in there. No juice. Empty your pockets on the table. Hey, do you have a copy of the L.A. phone book Come on, mister, here? empty your pockets, will you? All right. Come on, everything. Huh? How about your wallet? There you are, young man. No juice. Take the money out. I told you there's no juice. No money in the wallet? No. All right, how about it? This your true name, Victor Nathaniel Roberts? You think I use the alias? Now, don't huh? be smart. Where do you live? Well, I, I have no pad. Where you been sleeping? Where have I been? You got a job? What? Do you work? No. You ever hold a job? No. Nope. Never had a job? Can't remember what. What were you doing on 51st Street tonight? Oh, I was just looking around. At 11.30 at night? The sun hurts my eyes. All right. I, I was just walking along the street when this young woman stopped me. She stopped you? She tried to pick me up. That girl was a policewoman. <laughs> You're telling me. Now, what were you doing out there? I'm never going there again. Ever been arrested? I am now. Before? I I'll tell you the truth. Yeah, you do that. I have. Where? Oh, all around. What were you arrested for? Vag. Have you done time in California? Come on, have you done time in California? Have you? Yes. I'll check the record, John. Right. Is he going to look me up? What's that? I say, is he going to look me up? He's going to check your record, yeah. Mm -hmm. Officer, you mind a little constructive criticism? Now, you listen, mister. Your funny time's running out here. You must feel a little sneaky about this whole thing, don't you? What's that? I mean, this whole business about the police woman. Don't you think that that's going too far? How long you been in Los Angeles? Oh, sometime this year. What do you mean by that? Oh, checked in about a year. What? I said I checked in about a year. A year ago, you mean? Yeah, yeah, about a year ago. Well, if you haven't got a job, how do you manage to live? I haven't got a little drink, have you? Joe. Yeah. See you in a minute. All right. You sit still. What do you got? You checked R and I. Got the word on Roberts. Yeah. What about him? He's been tagged 67 times for drunk. All in L.A. Totals 92. Doesn't look like he's our man though. Why? Well, he's been in Camarillo for the last three months. <laughs> put in a call to the superintendent at the state hospital up at Camarillo. He told us that Victor Roberts had only been released 10 days before. He'd spent three months undergoing treatment for alcoholism. The suspect we were looking for had been working for the past two months. Roberts was booked in at the main jail on the charge of violation of section 4127A LAMC. During the time we'd been working on the case, all known purse snatchers had been picked up and interrogated. Runs by the stats office had been made and the names they gave us had been checked out. Locals and APBs were gotten out, carrying the description and the M.O. of the suspect. The leads that came in were followed up without result. Informants were questioned, and George Brereton, up at CII in Sacramento, furnished us a list of possible. All in all, over 100 people had been questioned. In the course of the investigation, several other cases were cleared, but our prime suspect was still free. Meantime, the operation continued. Each night at 4.30 p.m., 10 police women would board streetcars and buses in the area. 
10 police cars carrying 20 officers would follow them. In the immediate vicinity, another 40 men were patrolling the streets and alleys looking for the thief. As a result of the newspaper stories on the string of crimes, calls were coming into the complaint board at such a rate that they were jamming our normal facilities. Women refused to walk the streets alone after dark. Apparently, the thief could come and go as he pleased. In the next two days, he hit three times, but in areas that were not covered. He began to hit in places he hadn't worked before. He seemed to know where we were and that we were using decoys. The search went on. Tuesday, December 2nd, we got a call from the manager of a cheap hotel in the Skid Row area. We drove out to see her. Right down this way. He's not in. Well, just what is it you want us to see? You wait. When you get a good look, you'll know. Yes, ma'am. Here we are. I'll get the door. You just come on in. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Over here. I was cleaning up this morning. My girl's sick. Had to do it myself. Mm-hmm. And just cleaning up, and I found them over here in the closet. Yeah. Up on the shelf. Can you see them up there, way back? Wait a minute, let's get a chair. Well, I was just straightening up, and I saw them, and I thought to myself, I ought to call the police, get them right out here. That's what I thought to myself. Yes, ma'am. I always feel it's the duty of every citizen to cooperate with the police. Yes, ma'am. You got your flashlight, please? Huh? Flashlight. Oh, yeah, here you go. Well, do you see them up there on the shelf? Yes, ma'am. Frank? Yeah? There's something down there I can pick him up with. Yeah. Well, you'll find out anyway. You don't have to worry about fingerprints. I guess I shouldn't have done it. But when I found them, I picked them up, but I put them right back, right where I found them. Here you are. Okay. What you got? Two women's purses. Mm-hmm. Two. Look inside of them. All kinds of cards and things. No money, but all kinds of other stuff. You just look. Who has this room? You mean registered? Yeah. Well, he gave his name as Jerry Kilgallen. You asked me, though, I think it's phony. You take the room alone, did he? Oh, absolutely. This is a hotel for men. Don't allow no women in. Is it possible that somebody else left these purses up there? Hardly. These rooms are cleaned every day, cleaned thoroughly. I don't miss anything. Yes, sir. How about the identification in them, Joe? No, I don't recognize the names. We'll have to check them. Mm. Take a look at this, though. No, here, on the lining of the purse. This one. Oh, yeah. I better get it to the lab, huh? What is it? You find something? We're not sure. Well, what is it? I called you. I got a right to know. What is it? It looks like blood stains. You are listening to Dragnet, the authentic story of your police force in action. Tobacco has been one of man's basic pleasures for over 400 years. And the Chesterfields you smoke today are the best cigarettes ever made. When I say that, I mean Chesterfield regular, I mean Chesterfield king size. Remember, Chesterfield is the cigarette that is tested and approved by 30 years of scientific tobacco research. The cigarette that gives you proof of highest quality. Yes, friends, the Chesterfields you smoke today are the best cigarettes ever made. For the taste you want, the mildness you want, Change to Chesterfield. They satisfy millions. We got a complete description of Jerry Kilgallen and Frank called it into R&I. We found no record on him under that name. The purse was sent to Lieutenant Lee Jones at the crime lab and after running a precipitate test, he told us that the stains were human blood. A stakeout was placed on the hotel and that night, Kilgallen was taken into custody. Under interrogation, he admitted taking the purses from two women in a department store in downtown Los Angeles. He went on to explain that he'd just gotten into town and that he was broke and hungry. He gave us the date and the times of the thefts, and when we called the victims, they were able to give us positive identifications. He told us that when he'd taken the second purse, he'd cut his hand on the clasp and that the bloodstains we found were his own. He was booked in at the main jail on the charge of suspicion of robbery. That night, Frank and I took up our place in the dragnet operation. Nothing happened. The next night went by without activity. On Thursday night at approximately 8.45, a woman was slugged and robbed after she left the bus on 71st Street just off Vermont. All cars in the operation converged on the area, and a block-by-block search was made. Additional officers were called in to aid in the hunt. Every alley, every street, and every backyard was gone over thoroughly. 11.15 p.m. While the search continued, Frank and I drove down to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital to talk to the latest victim. I was on my way home. I didn't think anything like this had happened. I was just walking home. Can you give us a description of the man? 
I don't know. It's dark. I was just walking home and it happened. Did you see the man at all? Yes. It was dark. Was he a tall man? I, I guess so. I guess he was tall. I talked to the other men. Isn't that enough? I talked to them. Well, we're trying to get all the information we can. I, I don't remember good. My head hurts. Isn't there something they can do to make my head stop hurting? Did you see the man's face? Did you get a look at it? Yeah. Yes, I did. I saw his face. Can you describe it for us? Can you tell us what he looked like? I don't know. I don't feel good. Well, this is pretty important, ma'am. He had a real white face. Real white. What about his eyes? Can you tell us what color they were? Blue. Watery. Blue. How about his hair? It looked brown. I'm not sure. I think it was brown. He had a hat on. I couldn't tell good. All right, just a few more questions now. Yeah. Can you tell what color his hat was? I don't know. My head hurts. Can't you do something? We'll send for the doctor again. He might be able to give you another sedative. Hurts? There's well, something else, ma'am. Was the man clean shaven? Huh? I said, did he have a mustache? Uh, no. No mustache. Does he wear glasses? No. Is there anything else you can tell us about his appearance? No. Nothing. He had a, a gun. I know that. He had a gun. That's what he hit me with. Gun. Mm -mm. He hit me when I wouldn't give him the purse. First, he asked me for the money. I told him to get out of my way. He said he'd kill me. Then he hit me on the head. Hit me as hard as he could. All right, ma'am. Now, is there anything else you can tell us that might make it easier to identify him? No. Nothing. I told you everything I know. Nothing else. All right, we're sorry to have bothered you. Thank you. We'll be talking with you again when you're feeling better. Yeah. You come back then. I'll, I'll tell you I remember then. Thank you very much for your help. It's all right. You ask the doctor to come back, won't you? Yes, ma'am. Uh, officer. Yes, ma'am. Something else it might help a little bit. What's that, ma'am? Before he hit me, I remember there was a fight. I didn't want him to take my purse. There was a fight. Yeah. I tried to stop him, and I scratched him. I scratched him hard. See, I broke a fingernail when I did it. That'll help, won't it? Yes, ma'am. It should. Last thing I remember before he hit me, he was bleeding a lot. Where did you scratch him, ma'am? Do you remember? On the hand? No. No, I... Right across the face. Uh, left side. We got to a phone and we had a broadcast put out carrying the additional information on the man and the fact that he had been badly scratched. Officers in the immediate area of the attack started a check of all the drugstores that were open in the hope that the thief had stopped for medication. After getting the call out, Frank and I left the hospital and started back to search the area. 11.46 p.m. You talked to the doctor about the victim? Yeah, she's in pretty bad shape. They're going to move her to general. Sebastian says he might have to operate. Be glad to get this guy. Yeah. Attention all units. Attention, all units. You want to turn it up, Joe? All units on frequency 7, please stand by. All units in the vicinity of the 100 block on West 29th Street. Officer needs help. Special attention, 1K80, code 3. Lean on it. Right. All units in the vicinity of the 100 block on West 29th Street. Officer needs help. Special attention, 1K80, code 3. Frequency 7, clear. I'll call him. 1K80 to Control 1. Acknowledging the call to the 100 block on West 29th Street. KMA 367. Took us two and a half minutes to get to the location. At the curb on the side of the street, we saw a parked police unit. Standing next to it was a woman officer. We pulled up next to the unit and talked to her. She told us that our suspect had tried to attack her, and on the arrival of the two officers had fled the scene. At that moment, Officers Sluter and Murphy were in pursuit. While Frank got additional information from the policewoman, I went back to the car and got on the radio. 1K80 to Control 1. 1K80 to Control 1. Control 1 to 1K80. Go ahead. Suspect is now on foot being pursued by two plain clothes officers through backyards in the area of West 100 block between 29th Street and 30th Street. Dispatch units to block intersections of Broadway and 29th Street. Broadway and 30th. Broadway and 28th Street. Broadway and 27th. Intersections of Main and 28th. 
Main and 29th. Main and 30th Streets. Main and 27th Street. Control 1 to 1K80. One Roger. KMA 367. I got the story. You set? Yeah, let's go. Policewoman says they're headed west. Let's the back of the house down there. All right. Let's move. Attention all units. Attention all units. 1K80. Police woman says suspect, suspect ducked into a driveway. That one right up there. All right, take it easy. Right. West 29th Street, now being pursued. Looks like we got a live one this time, huh? Well, let's hope we can keep him. In the backyard, right, pull up between here. 100 right. block 29th Street and 100 block right, West 30th right. Street. 1K82. Block the intersection. Flashlights over there, Joe. Let's take a look. You see who it is? No. Ducked back behind the garage. Sluder, what do you got? He's back there. Murphy's with him. You guys all right? Yeah. All right, let's take a look. You want to call an ambulance, Frank? Right. How is he? Well, you better stop Frank. Yeah. Tell him to cancel that ambulance. He opened up first, Joe. Murph and I gave him every chance. Well, that's more than he gave those women. The story you have just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On December 8th, an inquest was held in the offices of the coroner in and for the county of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that inquest. Now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you. Earlier, George Fenneman told you exactly why the Chesterfield you smoke today is the best cigarette ever made. And best for you. Now, the rest is up to you. Get a carton or two for yourself. Smoke them and you'll say, as we do, it's Chesterfield's for me. <laughs> At the inquest, the coroner's jury returned a verdict that the suspect, Kenneth Neal Stewart, died as a result of gunshot wounds inflicted by police officers in the line of duty. The death was listed as justifiable homicide. have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Van Sprasher. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Vic Perrin, Vivi Janus, Herb Ellis. Script by John Robinson. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. Watch an entirely different Dragnet case history each week on your local NBC television station. Please check your newspapers for the day and time. Chesterfield has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles. Filter cigarette smokers, here is headline news. Nationwide demand for L and M filters drops price. Now you save up to four cents a pack, 40 cents a carton, now everyone can afford America's highest quality and best filter tip cigarette. Remember, only L and M's have the miracle filter tip containing alpha cellulose. You get much more flavor, much less nicotine. Buy L and M filters, the distinctive monogram cigarette at the new low price. L and M filters. <laughs> Crime and Peter Chambers following John Cameron Swayze on the NBC Radio Network.